Hi guys, welcome back to Chaos Maker's Hobby House. It has been two weeks since I did my first garden tour of the season, and uh, we've had we've had a couple good rainstorms come come through, and and I can't believe how much everything has filled in and grown. It has changed so much in two weeks. It's starting to look beautifully wild, and I figured I'd uh, give you a little update and and show you exactly how much it has grown. So just as a reference, this is how it was two weeks ago. And this is how it is now. There's so much more green. Everything is so big. My pole beans have made it to the uh, top of the arch. Whereas two weeks ago, they hadn't even gotten tall enough to reach the bottom of the trellis. They're not producing yet, but they are growing so fast. Now, the pole beans aren't producing yet, but the bush beans are. That's your uh, red swan bush bean? Yes, red swan bush bean. I've harvested a couple handfuls off of this already. And the purple, purple teepee ones are also producing. I'd be ready to pick those soon. I've been getting a few of the Maxidor, but I, I could have swore that Maxidor was supposed to be a yellow bean and those are green, so. I'm not entirely sure if they are Maxidor. First time growing that variety, so I'm not sure what to expect, but the, the Blue Lake hasn't really produced anything, but they are flowering. The squash has absolutely exploded. It's so big. And this isn't even the largest of it. But we're getting flowers daily. Oh, I need to pollinate that one here. I have harvested a few squash off of it so far. Ooh, that one's ready. That uh, Zephyr zucchini. But it's doing phenomenal. I am trying to grow some of them vertically just to save a little bit of space and I want to see how they fare with the squash vine borers even though the eggs are laid by a fly daytime flying moth um, you know growing vertically is not going to stop them from laying the eggs but it may help with airflow and make the stems a little bit thicker and uh woodier so it's harder for the boars to actually get through but we'll see I just needed to make them <laughs> not spread out quite as much so i think i've got four growing up right but look at look at this this is a gray zucchini that's not powdery mildew that's how the leaves grow that's a, a variegation in the leaf threw me for a loop the first time I, I grew it but it's it's so pretty lots of yellow crookneck coming and a random sunflower now this squash plant, <laughs> it's an overachiever. This thing is enormous. Oh, looks like we got some harvest ready in there. That's just your classic dark green zucchini. I don't know why it's so much bigger than all the others, but she'd be happy. Not even sure if I can get the camera far enough away so you can see the size of this thing. <laughs> It's another one that I'm growing up right. Actually, I did some damage. <clears throat> I went to spray some neem oil on it because I was finding um, some pests, some uh, caterpillars, cutworms, kind of caterpillars, and some squash vine bore eggs. So I mixed my neem oil to give it a good dousing, just to give it a little uh, bit of protection. And for some reason, I got it in my head that my sprayer canister was two gallons when in fact it's only one gallon so I concentrated it like it was two gallons and ended up burning some of my plants so you really see it on this little guy and some of my melons too they should recover it's not irreparable damage they're already putting out new new good looking leaves but yeah, so uh, note to self, always check, double check the size of your sprayer before you mix your solution. 
Tomatoes are looking fabulous. We're starting to get some flowers here and I have started tying them up to the support structure. Just a little, little baling twine, a little string, whatever you got on hand. Um, I have been pruning off the lower branches as they get a little bit taller. You don't want these leaves touching the ground. If these leaves touch the ground or get any splash back from watering, uh, it can actually promote um, viruses and disease in your plants. So you want to you want to keep those leaves far away from the ground. And a good mulch will also help stop soil splash back. Yeah, we got we got a little bit flowering so hopefully we'll get some tomatoes here soon. I know I know this tiny little guy trust me he's supposed to be this small. I think it actually has tomatoes on it right over there. Yeah this is the Tidy Treats cherry tomato. It's it's a very very small variety and it's supposed to be that way. It's just it's like a little tree. It's so cute. Now outside of just cutting off the lower leaves on cherry tomatoes, I don't do too much for pruning unless it's really, really dense and has poor airflow. I really don't, I don't take off these suckers for, for cherry tomatoes. I do, however, on large tomatoes. So over on this side where I keep my large tomatoes, I try to prune them down to one or two primary stems and take off the suckers. Um, I did leave this sucker right here. I just didn't get to it before it got massive, but it's it's okay. Um, I did prune off all the other suckers as, as I noticed them though. The suckers are just the little, little shoots that grow in kind of the armpits of the tomato. Uh, it, it'll just make it very, very thick. Uh, per, but, and you'll have issues with, with airflow and it could encourage disease. Like there's, there's a little sucker right there, right here. So just snap it off. There you go. I do have one tomato that is quite sad. It's black from Tula tomato. Uh, it, it's an heirloom. I think, I think some sort of virus got to it or fungal disease. I'm not sure. I did treat it with a copper fungicide, an organic copper fungicide, in hopes that maybe it'll make a comeback. Um, I don't think it will, so I did start some additional seeds, but of course, they're going to take a while. Here's a good example of how I prune them. You can see it's just one long stalk up until the top here, where I allowed one of the suckers to grow out, so we have two branches. We got this one doing the same thing. Now, in my first garden tour, I mentioned this little guy. He was just all wilted and sad and flopped over and it happened overnight. No idea what happened. Well, a few hours later, it was perky and fine. So, it's a little, little small. Especially in comparison to his friends. But, that's okay. We'll just let him do its thing. It's recovering quite well and growing a lot faster now. I've been having some issues with... with cutworms or army worms. See if there's any on there today. I think we're good. Yeah, tomato or peppers are looking good and we're starting to get little buds on them. My first time growing okra. I always thought these things got pretty pretty dense and pretty thick and big but um he's a little spindly. However it's producing okra. We'll see how this goes. Like I said I have no idea if I even like okra. This is an experiment. Should I try okra for the first time on camera? It could be some pretty interesting faces. <laughs> I did pull out all my carrots. They were done. They weren't getting any bigger. So, I'm gonna add those to snacks. They weren't that big. Um, it's just too hot for them. I'm about to pull out this cauliflower. Ooh. Yeah, it needs to get pulled out. It is moments away from bolting, even though it's Teeny tiny. And I still have a big cauliflower plant, but it's probably not going to amount to anything. Oh, hi, Mr. Dragonfly. Thank you for eating the mosquitoes for me. Oh, my potato. They do not look too happy. I've already pulled out a few that basically completely died back, and they're 
weren't many potatoes under there. So, like I said, I kind of kind of forgot about these this year. Didn't hill them, didn't water them, didn't fertilize them. And well, you can tell. So I'll probably be digging most, if not all of these out here very, very soon and see if I actually got anything. Mistakes were made. Garlic's looking fantastic though. Been uh, plucking off the scapes that they keep trying to produce. So they will put more energy to the bulb. And the garlic corner is such a fantastic smelling corner. Got my herbs over here as well. Parsley, basil, catnip. And mint all the way as far away from soil as it can get. So hopefully it doesn't spread. Well, I got my cucamelon in the ground since the last time I showed you guys. It's uh, doing pretty well. Hopefully it'll climb up this fence and I won't have to add any extra support. And next to another random sunflower. What is that? Oh no you don't. Oh. Squash bug, stink bug. Whatever you name it, whatever you call it, is not welcome here. Oh, yes, you are welcome here. Go get that thing. Go get that nasty stink bug, little assassin bug. I have faith in you. You can do it. You're going the wrong way. He's the other way. Turn around. Fine, I'll do it myself. He is no more. Joke all you want. Salad toppings in the garden come in really, really handy. Oh no, they're here. The Japanese beetles are coming. Now over to my secondary little, little garden bed here. I'm sure you remember my loofah wasn't even really starting to climb yet. My ridge gourd was maybe yay high. Well, She's a little bigger than Yehi. All that in two weeks. It's insane. This one wasn't climbing at all. Amazing. Oh, I think, I don't know if I had this here. Last time I took you guys along, it's a, uh, it's a honeydew. Watermelon's starting to crawl. Typical crawly, viney thing activity. Just the, the amount of growth though, so fast. And talk about growth. Look at that corn. I told you once they reach their rapid growth cycle, they go insane. Hold on. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it's about hip high on me. Oh, I love it. I love my, jung my jungle. Soon to be a very wild and crazy jungle. They're wanting to lean just a little bit. I did hill them twice already. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to actually bring in soil because I couldn't dig up enough soil from around them without interfering with their roots um, to really give them good support, but they are doing so well this year. I was looking back at, uh, at, at like memories. Memories uh, from photos I took last year and year before that, and <laughs> they were, minuscule this time last year compared to now. So I think I finally, finally got the technique down. Oh, I struggled with corn for so long. So this is exciting for me. Might not be exciting for everyone, but it's exciting for me. So let me have it. I did get some sweet potato slips, some additional ones in the ground. So we're up to four, five now. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Um, trying to start just a couple more to go right in this area and then sweet potatoes will be all set and I can just let them be and pretty much ignore them until they're ready. Easiest thing to grow ever. They thrive on neglect. That's my kind of plant. Now onto the front garden. Getting a good amount of these uh, eversweet strawberries. These were bare roots I planted this year. I wanted to switch out the mystery strawberries that I had 
and uh, try a new variety. It needs a little bit more. And they're doing really well. I like them so far. That's not quite ready yet. Still have some of the originals and yeah, they gave me some in the beginning, but they're kind of petering out. But that's okay because I have plans. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Video coming soon. <laughs> okay. My next favorite thing. It's raspberry season. Oh, happy days. To the end's golden. I'm getting, right now, only about a handful a day. You evil. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting about a handful a day. Oh, and the Japanese beetles are getting a lot worse. Okay. Um, but here in a couple weeks, this thing is going to be absolutely loaded. You can see all the fruit that's yet to, uh, yet to ripen. Oh, that's a good one. If these little beasties leave it alone for two friggin' seconds. Hey, Mr. Assassin Bug, can you, can you do your job, please? He's right there. Sad part is, this is just the start of it. It's gonna get so, so much worse. Here in a couple weeks, I'll probably shake my green bean trellis and just be absolutely swarmed. And nothing works against them. Just kind of hunker down and wait for it to be over. Did pick my first um, pink lemonade blueberry the other day. Got a lot more coming though. I had to put some bird knitting around this because the birds really like blueberries. So It's in blueberry jail. So I think in my last video, my passion fruit, my Nancy Garrison's Nancy Garrison passion fruit was was flowering for you. I'm I'm not seeing any flowers today, but we have fruit. See that? Oh, I'm so excited. This is my first year with this. I am shocked that it is producing and so excited. Mr. Owl keeping my raspberries safe over here. These are dormant red raspberries. Ah! These haven't started ripening yet. Oh, but you could see the damage that the Japanese beetles do. They just skeletonize the leaves. Oh, thankfully, usually the plants bounce back if they're if they're mature enough. We've got a lot of fruit coming. If you don't eat it all, can't get any help around here. Doink. So about a week ago, I was at Walmart and they had all their bulbs on clearance. It was like 15 bulbs for $2 and I couldn't pass it up. And they, honestly, the bulbs didn't look great. They were really dried out and shriveled and yeah. But it's only been a week and they're popping up. These are all going to be gladiolus of like reds and sunset colors and a really, really deep, deep burgundy. I think that'll fill in this area nicely. It'll be a nice, a nice tall flower. Oh, you can see the little parachute pants today. <laughs> Pomegranate flowers. Oh, I wish it would focus. They're so cute. Parachute pants. But once they're pollinated, pomegranate. This variety is a dwarf variety. It's only going to produce fruit about the size of a golf ball. I have a full-size variety that uh, is still very immature, but oh, it's so pretty. There's a really pretty flower down there. And the watermelon that is intertwined throughout all my flowers as well is doing pretty good. I have a few different varieties here. <clears throat> no flowers yet, still just running, which is fine. Oh, hey, can you help with the Japanese beetles? Oh, fine, be like that. I had also mentioned over the winter I moved my Siam tulips around in here, and I thought I really damaged a lot of them because they had a really delicate bulb, but my concern of whether or not they will come up 
if I did too much damage is um not a concern anymore. They're all coming up. Oh, and there's another one right there. And then that's going to be a uh, flame torch ginger, something like that. It's stunning. Just you wait. Now I will say the Oari Satsuma Mandarin did drop a lot of its fruit, but it also held on to a lot of it. I mean, it's a very, very young tree, so for it to support the amount of fruit that it was trying to set is just, mm, it's not gonna happen. But the ones that it keep, that the ones that it kept, they're, they're growing. They're looking really good. You can even see the texture of the rind on them. But you can tell like that one whoop, just falls right off. It was yellowing, not quite ready. <sighs> but I need not be mad. It's part of nature. It's what needs to happen. If it tries to support all these fruit, the, the, nothing will ripen or the, or the tree will suffer. And last but not least, my persimmon tree. It did have a whole bunch of uh, flowers on here, but none of them seem to have gotten pollinated. So they all dropped, which is unfortunate. Do have some, some up here that are still hanging on so hopefully those got pollinated and I'll get some fruit this year but right around when they were opening we got a lot of rain and the pollinators pollinators didn't really come out so it is what it is I only got four off of it last year so I'll be happy with any amount of fruit it gives me so yeah there has been a lot of growth in the last two weeks and I just had to show you how much of a difference a short period of time makes and the crazy thing is I was watering everything accordingly I was actually using rainwater from my rain barrel but there's something about just fresh rain falling from the sky that any other watering method it just just doesn't compare to even if you use rainwater it doesn't have the same effects I swear after after we had a really good rain everything doubled in size and then we got another really good rain and it doubled again. <laughs> but I figured I'd give you a little bit of an update to see how much things really can change and how quick. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm really looking forward to this garden season. You know, Japanese beetles and all. It may not be my favorite, but they are part of the garden season. Thank you so much for joining me today. And all the days you do. <laughs> I'll see you next time.